So, sorry, I'll be using the, the paper. And the talk was originated by requests and questions I had from to a couple of people here about how, what we are doing regarding uh, real time and embedded uh, programming in the uh, C plus in HP. And uh, well, the reason I'm saying that I'm qualified to say something about it is twofold. First, I'm doing, I have a long experience with C plus plus. My thesis uh, work. Uh, Work was about using the new uh, uh, write uh, language C++ to create a parallel, in parallel implementation of PLUS. PLUS is a known uh, mathematical library. And there was this new language that came about in 1990, about something like this. And uh, I used it to create implementation, a parallel implementation. And that was long time ago, and uh, most of my career uh, was doing embedded and real-time work in the first couple of years. So, last uh, 18 years or so, I'm with HP Indigo, writing scenes and postcards for uh, real-time uh, presses. And um, I hope everybody will come with any, something new for this presentation. And uh, Mike, you'll come with new ways to pronounce English words that you never dreamed of. Uh, so, what we mean. What we mean by real time and embedded programming in HP Indigo? This is what we are doing. We produce, we manufacture press machines. Uh, this is, these are not creators. We work at uh, Indigo, we get a bit irritated when this, people describe what we're doing as creators. This is a creator. <laughs> okay? This is a press machine. There is a million dollar or so difference in the uh, in size, if you can see difference. And what's even more important for me, there is complexity uh, variance between the two. This one is more complex. I'm not, I'm not disparaging the, the guys who work on the uh, printers, but this is a complex machine. Okay? And if you look at Let's see. If you look at this box here, it's, it's an example. This is what you might see if you open uh, the box. To demonstrate what I mean, okay. I think it's not working because I'm colorblind. I don't see it here, but it's <laughs> But this round takes, let's say, uh, two times a uh, uh, second which is not very fast, uh, and actually I'm even uh, lying a bit about it, but uh, it's not uh, very fast, uh, this computer programming uh, work, but a lot of things have been used uh, during this rotation. Take, for example, this thing here, which we have seven here. Every such uh, rotation, it might move in, move out, there are uh, multiple uh, high voltages inside it that might turn on and off at various times. There are a lot of sensors, uh, actuators, a lot, a lot of things that might that should be sensed, read, or activated during correct timing during this uh, moment. Now, most of it is controlled by a. a, a most of it is controlled by our finger. It's not, we're not talking microseconds mostly here. It's not high speed trading. Uh, if you read, if you heard lectures about high speed uh, trading, when, when you're talking about uh, single digit uh, microseconds, this is not what I'm doing. Uh, but we're talking milliseconds. 
Something must happen in or around a specific millisecond. Usually we have a, a step of a couple of milliseconds. We, can, we are allowed, but this is, but this is hard real time, which means, which means that if you want to do what you're required to do in time, something bad might happen. Something bad means here you either ruin a uh, print, you might get something burned, uh, you, get, you might get voltages uh, in the wrong time. A lot of nasty things might happen, and they do happen in the, in the lab, mm -hmm. uh, if, if you get things wrong in, in such a system. So this is how we do And most, just a bit of a caveat here, most of the, the real-time uh, aspects of this press, this machine, are controlled by our firmware. The asterisk here is because when we are talking sub milliseconds, we usually delegate what we're doing to FPGAs and uh, electronics. And uh, when we're talking about motion, we delegate it to PLCs. That's, it couldn't be otherwise, but this is not the way we are going to do it. Okay. Now we're running multiple electronic modes today in the last years or so, uh, they are mostly ARM-based. I think this is the standard. Uh, um, we're using multiple uh, operating systems. We used to use CMX, and I think I'm working the only two companies that use CMX. I don't think many heard about this, uh, this specific uh, system here. Uh, Thread ThreadX, Brixworks, and Linux. Linux, uh, really. Again, those who know the Linux system is the Linux system. Somebody's talking about this. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't we are, we are using uh, Linux, uh, the Preamp RT Linux, a serene time operating system. Uh, that's another talk, but uh, it's possible. And we have a long history of free experience. Until some 18 years ago, it was mostly or all, only C++. A C++. Um, and then, we switch to C++. Mm -hmm. ah. So we switch to C++. I think the reasons are clear. There's the buzzwords, the object-oriented design, the, the strongly typed uh, language, uh, or development of metaprogramming, which we didn't have the beginning, but now, this is the uh, uh, C++ uh, meetup, so I'm preaching to the choir here, so I won't go into details here. As someone mentioned here today, there is a lot of, um, a lot of resistance in the embedded community to writing in C++. Uh, people used to the old assembly, uh, old good assembly language, and then there was the new C, and the uh, C++ is a bit too much for many people, many embedded problems. And there are some good reasons and there are some bad reasons for this. Um, I, think, I think we showed in the last 18 years that we benefit, and we benefit a lot from writing in uh, using C++. It's doable, and the drawbacks are mostly non-existent. So, We'll talk a few, few words about it. I won't delve too much because the time uh, is limited. One thing that is real and is a problem is the fact that when you're doing embedded, usually you have some you have limited resources. These are two of the uh, microprocessors we're using. The device is the STM32. Uh, and this is the IMX uh, 6. 
the memory we have on those boards are between 52 kilobytes flash and 64 kilobytes RAM, up to one gigabyte RAM, the timing six. It's not a lot, but it's a lot if you're coming from a very small, from very small computers. The first Indigo, the first Indigo Press 20 years ago was uh, on smaller processors than even this. But it's a small amount of uh, memory. And this limits what we can do, what we uh, can allow ourselves when using uh, And there are, there are a few more problems. But apart from the uh, hardware limitations, why on a million dollar machine are you bothering with such a tiny processor? Why can't you buy a little bit? This is a good question, but uh, uh, which I don't have. A, well, the real answer is we have many of those. Uh, we have many of those in the uh, in each press, and yes, it adds up. And uh, another type of reason is that. It's hard to come to management and say that you need a large amount of, to invest a lot of money in processors that you are good enough to do it in, in, with a small amount. You have to justify, you have to have a good justification uh, for higher amounts. But we are on our main boards. I'm a bit spreading my company, but in, uh, uh, in our main boards, we are using this, which is a high end processor uh, with uh, one gigabyte RAM. It's a lot. It's not, uh, it's, it's not that much if you, when you put uh, the file system, the kernel, uh, the Linux kernel, the file system, and the program, and everything else on it, but it's still. Quite a lot of um, Now there are, there are real problems using simple person embedded uh, projects. One of them is the availability of compilers. It's a long problem, uh, a very uh, lengthy problem. Um, C++ goods, it's hard to find good C++ compilers for uh, embedded uh, development. It's getting better. Arm now is using uh, Arm six uh, uses Clang, uses Clang, uh, which is supposed to be up to date. Uh, Linux, I can use uh, JCC or whatever I want actually uh, to compile the code, but it's a problem. Um, and one thing, one issue is that. When you decide to go with one of the big three or big four compiler vendors on the project, it's nice, but you're losing all those uh, special ad adaptations that some hardware manufacturers make for, to the system and development uh, environment for the uh, specifics of their processor or the operating system. It's not just that I need to get a really good compiler for, let's say, the STM32. I need to get one that is good to use on FedEx, with FedEx, and I need to get one that is usable, that is usable with the hardware registers of the STM. It's not that it adds complexity. This is a real problem. This is not, uh, but this is something that is worth Fighting with there are some lectures on the web regarding this issue, what could be done. Um, I'm not, I skip this, I come back to this uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt with, uh, that is are common regarding C and later on. Let's get to some. Okay. What I show is that what we found out is that using C++ we can do it, we disregard this fear and those uh, un, uh, those rumors that are unsubstantiated, and 
What we get is high level abstraction with limited known costs. This I, I stole this sentence from a uh, lecture. Uh, I don't remember who it was. Uh, but this is this is true, and this is what we found, and this is what I can prove in the next few slides. And I'll give you a, a few examples. What we found out that we get faster coding, that's true, writing in the object oriented uh, system, system, it's easier. And I can say I wrote many years <coughs> and many years plus plus, it's easier to write C plus and write C. You get clear code and you have improved quality. And the nice thing that we found that you probably, if you're doing your work as you should, you'll get smaller and faster binary code. What we, a few words about what type of simple we are talking about. We are using uh, the dialect is either zero three. Uh, or uh, all C17 based on the availability of the compiler for the uh, for the operating system that we are talking about. For VxWorks, there, pro there probably are better compilers, but we are, the one we are using, the one we have purchased and the, we have licensed, is uh, only does not support C11. Okay, and this was the limiting factor for many years for us. On the VxWorks. Uh, only when we switch to Linux, we were able to use better, better compilers. We don't use exceptions for many reasons. I think this is common for most uh, embedded developers. Uh, one reason, which is not the, the most important for us, is the termination, uh, the time it takes when uh, accepting this form. Another reason, which is the more uh, important is the stack size that might be used by exception. There are a few, few more reasons, but it's easier simply to say minus <coughs> accept or accept and compile everything later. Uh, we are doing limited uh, RTTI. I'm saying it, but I'm lying here. Actually, we do it around, but we are trying to we are trying to kill this the use of RTTI. Uh, uh, because we are doing the worst thing you can possibly do, which is a, a dynamic uh, cast. And I'm trying to go over code and change it to at least typing for uh, that ID, so in uh, quality instead of uh, dynamic cast. What you are doing it about? No. Yeah. Do you, do you use the third-party libraries? And, and if you do, do, do these restrictions place limits on the library you use? Like a Kino Seven, for example. Well, if we are, if we are, there are two types of libraries. If it's code that we are compiling, we have problems. If if we are trying to compile something with no except and there is try catch uh, in the code. The libraries that we use, and there aren't many of those, usually have provisions for this. And some define or whatever that they change, you know, uh, that keep you know, the try catch. Uh, those. I don't care if, if a binary library uh, throws an exception. It's okay, I will just crash. This specific thread will crash. It's a bug and we'll have to solve it. We don't use uh, exceptions as a, co a control to this mechanism in the system. This is a bug that QA should uh, find the report before a project is, uh, over is uh, distributed. Um, and we're using, for many years, we had a version to the STL because of fears and uh, uh, some bad notions about size and the uh, robustness of the STL. Today we allow ourselves to use it. We are compiling with no exceptions. It does mean cert that certain things do not behave as they, as they are said to behave, but it's workable. So why do you need your own STL? Sorry? So what have you done different in your STL? No, we, we, are, we are using, but 
we are not adding everything here. We are we think about using a new feature. We will be careful before we use it, <laughs> and then see what the price might be in memory or whatever. I usually, if I can find replacements for some things that are uh, geared for embedded development, and I show one at least that came, came from SG14, my case, mm -hmm. good, uh, I prefer to use it. Now, when you're talking with other uh, team members and try to convince them to use that using C++ is not wasteful, <laughs> but we all know about Word Org, the Compiler Explorer. This is, uh, this is really a godsend uh, uh, tool for this. Uh, uh. For example, we usually hear uh, talk uh, claims about how expensive it is to use, ST, uh, to use arrays in uh, C++. And then you can see here, comparing the two, the two functions, one uses a, a, a std array, one uses c type arrays, and this is the code produced. I don't think there's a lot of difference in the, in the code. Okay, so this is, it's, it's a good demonstration to people. And it's not that just that you are getting the same performance. There are some things and some tricks that we can now use to get us better performance. And this is one example that is widely, widely discussed if, if you look for it. We have in many places dispatch tables. For example, suppose you have command arriving over some wire, whatever that wire is. And the command is an opcode. Which is the those defines on the left, and you want to create and you want to have a dispatch table of functions to execute to handle the rest of the of the incoming. Uh, this is something that we have by the tens in our C code, in old uh, C code. So what we have is like this: uh, handle incoming message, whatever dispatch of is it right? That C code. Normally, nothing, nothing especially. Actually, I use the C++ because I didn't have the heart to write C code, but this is C code. Okay? Yeah. And there's a problem here. How do you create, how do you create this table? So, one way to do it is to create it like this. Okay? You use the uh, value and create a dispatch table. And this is what we had, this is what you used to do once 20 years ago we used to do in uh, our C code. The reason this table is const for one thing and one important uh, reason is because if it's const where it goes to the flash. Okay? It doesn't it doesn't cost us run. And if you're talking about SPM32 uh, uh, processor with 64k bytes of uh, uh, RAM, which also goes to stacks, it's a lot. You don't waste memory. Do you see the problem with this? Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay. I got it wrong. And this is a good demonstration. I actually got it wrong by mistake preparing the slide, and I left it in. Because this is the problem, one of the problems that is caused by this type of uh, uh, system. The other and the, the more important one, you the one? sorry? You the one. Yeah, when I copied the numbers here, this is not seven. I got it in the F, uh, in the F position. Okay, and this, the, the more important reason is that this uh, common, common H file is usually uh, common. It's used in many systems. Many people are changing it. Are you sure that everybody who change this on another system for another system will remember to modify your code here to, uh, to follow the line? So what we are doing is simple. In, uh, in C, 
We are creating an initialization table. In the beginning of the program, just copy. Okay? We believe uh, C is a C code, which eh? was easier to write, less to write C code. We are creating the dispatch table uh, dynamically. What's the problem here? What we lost? Waste on. Yeah, I'm wasting on, which is a problem. So, this is. Now, I know that those of you who write better template code than me would probably see a lot of things I could have done better here. But this is a simple template uh, uh, code that at compile time produces that table that we saw earlier from the initialization table. Okay? This is a. Uh, and then. No. Okay, and then when I write the table, the initialization table like this, this is what I get uh, in, after the compilation. The table like I wanted it, as a const expression, as const in the flesh. Okay, this is something I couldn't do in, uh, in C. We could if you did it. Like static cost, no? In? If you did it on, if it would be static cost on the C side, it would be the same. I couldn't generate it. I couldn't generate no way, no, no way that I know. Uh, at least the CNO, no, which is not seen in uh, seen UC, okay? It's. Another good example that. This is a real. Uh, uh, this is a real interface. Well, more or less a real interface. I copied from uh, some script that we have. There are a lot of problems that uh, you can see with this uh, language board, but the one that uh, uh, I would like to draw your attention is this. There is a timeout. This is a. Uh, this specific line performs a read over a network. Okay, SDO, it's a kind of uh, protocol uh, read. Now, it has a timeout. What's the problem here? The units. The units. Now, it's not just theoretical. We had spent, uh, uh, one of the teams spent uh, now uh, two days trying to solve a problem that was caused because they thought that this, the number here are in, in microseconds, and actually they are in milliseconds. Okay? That was about a month ago. Now, you might say that you sh we shouldn't write like this. The name, the timeout should have been timeout in my milliseconds. You're right. And most code is written like this, but not everyone. We have a better solution in C++. We have Corner, which is a wonderful library. And then, so I can simply write really seconds here, and there is no way anybody will make that mistake again. Okay? This is important. And regarding the nasty fact that we have <coughs> four or five numbers here, integers that can be mixed in various permutations by those who didn't notice the order, I have other tools like, for example, uh, name types, uh, fluent uh, library uh, name types, which is a nice, nice library, which I can use to define a, channel, a name channel number, and then I can use it. And this way, and there is no way an integer could become a channel number without explicit casting. Some explicit work to do to get the value. Casting even won't have work. Okay? This is an example of things that improve, uh, really improve the quality of the code and, then, and reduce the number of bugs in the code to write. Two simple tools, Corona and uh, the strong types on strong names. <laughs> Another thing that uh, I like. This is an interface, a real interface, more or less, that we have in our code. 
we are reading some sensor, sensor ID in the place to, in a room appointed to place the data and a return code. This, this read might fail. This is a pretty ugly interface. For one thing, there are many new uh, uh, programmers. It happened in the first few times that when they see a function that requires an integer pointer, will give it an integer pointer, an uninitialized integer pointer to return the value. Okay? You will pay the price for this a few times. Okay? And then the problem will crash somewhere. No, because some APIs do expect to send some uh, yeah, the the address. Yeah, and that's that's a nasty thing by itself. And what's but what's more common is that nobody checks the return code. It's hard to force people to really check the return code. You can catch it in code review, but usually it goes under the radar and then you don't catch it. It's much better to use something like this. We are using outcome result. Outcome is a half boost. I don't remember if it was accepted. It was accepted to boost. Uh, it was one of the lengthiest uh, review periods. Yeah, 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 it was one of the longest uh, review periods. Uh, uh, it's a good library. I like it because it's geared to uh, embedded systems to uh, for not throwing if you don't want it to throw. And uh, here I define maybe sensor data as either a sensor value or some error which in real code probably I would have gone and used uh, one of the standards that are created now for a system error code or uh, something that is built over system error codes, but we didn't go there yet. Uh, and then I have a function that has no out parameters. Out parameters are problem. Okay? And because the way outcome result is built, people will check. Uh, the value. It, it reminds uh, expected. It is, but uh, it's very close to expected with a few minor changes, which I, and I like it bet, uh, better for our uh, projects. But what you are saying is that whenever we want to have more than one value returned to us, then we should do that on the return side of the value because the language has lack of ability to define the API that, that this is an out value? I don't think this, I don't think this, this is a lack of capability of C++. I'm saying this is a good way, and I think this is what currently, if I remember correctly, this is what is now recommended by the uh, guidelines, the core guidelines. Use return, uh, com compound return uh, value. You can use a, a structured binding of the return value, which is nice, very helpful. You can use a, a, all those a, optional or expected or outcome. You have many ways to, uh, to, get, to extract multiple values from a function. And because of the way the standard is, is created now, you have better uh, optimization uh, 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 opportunities for the compiler. Okay. It should be more, many times it will just be aligned uh, or together. Most of the, the extra moves will be aligned. And then the last uh, example of the thing of this time is the issue of callbacks. Callbacks is something that is used extensively in most reactive, when I say reactive, don't mean reactive like uh, reactive programming, reactive, reactive in the sense that events are coming and you should respond, respond to them. In most, uh, such, in most such system, we have the issue of callbacks. You have some service, you have some source of events, and you want to register, you want pieces of your code to register to receive those events. 
Okay, that's common uh, method. You have a client, let's say the service, there is a counter view, and there is a service that you might request it to be notified of certain values or certain uh, events here. And you can register to receive callbacks. How do you do it in C? There is one, one common way. Yeah. Function pointer, I don't go over the, this uh, recording. I don't want to spend, I don't have a lot of time yet. yet but you will be using uh, function pointers. The problem, of course, is that you have no, well, you don't have classes, and, but here you even don't have, you don't have a lot to put a state. So what you usually do, you keep some uh, global uh, state and some token that tells you, uh, when, you is, when you get a callback, tells you what the hell happened, what the hell was the request that uh, uh, cause this, originate this uh, uh, callback, and you have, as a client, you have to find what the num what was, what was the context in which you requested that uh, callback, okay? This is what you see here in the code. This is common, we have it in a lot of our C In C++, In C++, you use something like this. You create a, a functor, and I know it's functor is not the right name. Function object. Yeah, function object. But uh, um, you use a callable, a functional object that can hold the, uh, the state. This, don't copy this example. I removed a lot of details of uh, creating, moving, etc. of this object, but uh, this is the idea. You create something that can you can use to hold the state and call the function, the specific function that, uh, that you want. It's much better by itself, and today you can do better. You can do even better. You can use some kind of type erasure, or you can use for example, std function, or what we prefer to use is in place function, again, copied from uh, SG14. It was proposed as standard, it was, it's not there yet, but you, you can use the code. Okay, it's available, and we are using it. You have the in place function. In place function is a value type, is a, is a piece of memory with a limited size. In this case, the size is 16. The, the, the payload size is 16 bytes. You know exactly how much it, uh, 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 memory it uses. You can move it around easily. And it's a full callback. You define it, for example, you will define a callback, which is a function that we call whatever client by callback one. And for, for demonstration, I'm using this callback uh, later on, okay? It's much clearer this, well, it's not clear uh, for those who don't, are not uh, used to uh, Lambda uh, calls, but it is a clearer code than what we used earlier with the template uh, uh, programming. You can see easily what happens when Frank is called. You can see what the parameters are, in this case, you can see what happens. And this, all this is a value type. You can push around, you can move around, you can push to queues, you can head it over without uh, thinking about who owns the memory. It's, a, it's really, you can move it by value. It's much easier than every other way to handle things. And an ICAS stood function, it doesn't allocate, which is, might be very costly. Okay. Why do you need a parent? So, sorry, in the last time, the point is inside parentheses. Just by uh, I used to write. I don't know. Uh, no good reason. Uh, if you were then added uh, the capture in the roundup, uh, more captures, and the load the size will not compile. It will not compile. Yes. Yeah. 
the size for the it's a maximum it's the size and it won't compile it would uh, you get a, a very clear notification that you can't that the size is switched now the last five minutes a few things that doesn't work the way we, we hoped the way we, would, we wished uh, for them to work one of them is to said we would have loved to use two thread in our uh, uh, systems. There's, a, well, there's one minor problem with it. There is no way to set the stack size on a newly created thread. Now, when you, when you create a thread, there are a few things that, in, in an embedded real-time system, there are a few things that you might want to set. One of them is the priority. For so setting the priority, you have the, you can do it later on. You can do it immediately after creating the thread. You have the native handle, whatever that is, on a specific system, and you can change the priority of the thread. You have the name, which would like, which might help debugging. There are, you can do it immediately after creating the thread. The one thing that you cannot do after creating the thread is, is setting the uh, stack size. And if you're doing, if you're using uh, 20 threads on a uh, 200K RAM uh, CPU, you don't want to create threads with the default uh, value. Okay? You have to have control over the, uh, the stack size. This is a, a major issue. There is a proposal for change, and there is a, you can see, in, Presentation by Patty Soy, uh, designing a feature that doesn't fit. Uh, it talks about how he tries to push a proposal to add the attributes, those attributes uh, to his STD thread. It's not there yet. I hope it will get there. But there are ways we can, this is something that is not, not terrible because we can always use. P uh, thread, everything else will work uh, as, uh, using regular C. There is another problem, which is even more of an issue, is the fact that uh, mutex doesn't have priority inheritance, doesn't have any way to control. How, uh, what are the attributes of the mutex created? Now, you don't usually build a real time system without uh, enabling priority inheritance. Uh, it won't work. Uh, are you familiar with priority, what, what priority inversion means? Priority inversion means, okay, I heard the answer, so I assume. So, Building a system with, uh, without any tool to mitigate priority inversion means that you are building a system that you know will fail from time to time. And many systems are not allowed to fail from time to time. Okay? So without having, a, without having a way to set the attributes of mutex and creation, we cannot use it. We, do, we can use uh, the, some of the tools that work on mutexes. Unique lock, I think, except a mutex which is not uh, your, home, your homemade mutex, you can use, and uh, uh, I think uh, unique lock would accept it. And uh, one more thing that we can do, but we didn't yet because it was a lot of work to find the right, the right place, is to change the library and to have all mutexes, uh, uh, to change our version of uh, lib uh, uh, C++, uh, to change it so, such that all mutexes will be with priority inheritance. But I tried to invest in that now trying to find the, location, the right place to do it and uh, fail So I'm, I'm leaving it for now. But this is a, a major issue. Again, there should be a proposal uh, fixing that. Wait, can you go back to that? Um, is there a proposal in it right now? You said, what you said that it will work on a proposal. I don't know that for sure, but yeah, if, you, if he doesn't, then I would suggest that 
that we pitch we pitch a proposal for SG14 to be reviewed. Um, did you try putting um, attributes on the new text? To that might be one way to do it. I think it was discussed in some discussions in the Reddit. Okay. I, I don't think there is a proposal that was mentioned. The mechanism of the attributes of the whatever we would use to propose to thread to use it for a, a yeah, I do think this is the big problem that we need to solve. Solve. So if, if Patrice doesn't have one, then we should try to get. We should try to That's figure out how to do it. Um, another problem so we should remember, like we said, we are working with no exceptions, and documentation is not always clear about what happened to whatever library you're using when you're compiling with no exceptions. You can find it out, but it takes some work. And uh, while preparing this presentation, for example, I, I learned that uh, if I compile uh, uh, that, well, let's say that I always thought that if I'm compiling with no, minus F no exceptions, is, is at least means the same thing as I have marked all my functions as no except. And there was a discussion in the uh, client that says, no, you're wrong. And a few examples of why not. So this was new, new to me until today. <laughs> so it should have been clear. And uh, I would have liked to have the opportunity not to have to go over thousands of functions and to mark them all except just to save uh, a few cases of optimization or extra code that might be generated. This is a <laughs> minor problem. And there is a minor problem which I didn't invite you about allocator, uh, allocators. We, we, for example, never allocate from directly from the heap. Or at least we tell ourselves that we never allocate directly from the, from the heap. Um, never intention. We are using uh, whatever memory allocation that we, we came up with, which uses blocks, internal blocks per subject or whatever, depends on the project. Uh, it's not easy to incorporate those into uh, STL. We are doing it. PMR is supposed to be uh, better and uh, clearer and uh, easier way to do it. The problem is that PMR currently is not fully supported on the compilers that we are using, or the versions we are using. Uh, as we thought we just moved some project to GCC, I think it was 8.2, because we saw the header file, the header for PMR, there, and then after moving, we saw that the header was empty. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it didn't help a lot. It's a problem, it should be there as fast as we can, but it's not a problem of the language, it's a problem of the, the compiler vendors. And there are a few things that uh, will come, nice thing that will, will help us and will come only in uh, 20, plus 20, like stack press, which is a nice uh, thing.